it's me, John Park, and that is some echo. Let me turn that off. Whew, that's better. Hey, welcome to Make Code Live with me, John Park. Uh, I'm excited about today's show. Look, I added a little thing down there that tells us uh, what that's all about, which is we're going to be doing a Guitar Hero control mod today. I want to use one of these old Wii Guitar Hero controllers and... Uh, we're going to do that using Make Code and a Circuit Playground Express. In fact, you can see it right there. Uh, let's see. Before I move on, I'll let you know uh, if you want to participate in the chat, I'm going to try to keep an eye over on the Twitch chat. We're on uh, twitch.tv slash msmakecode. And uh, I'll also be checking out the Adafruit Discord chat. So that's, uh, you can go to adafruit.it slash discord if you want to join in on that. Uh, and one thing I like to do is check that chat and make sure that my audio is working because there's some astute listeners and observers there who will let me know uh, when I accidentally screw up the audio. So... Thank you for that. Uh, hello, C. Grover. Hello, Fede2. Nice to see you. Uh, and we're also over in the uh, in the YouTube, on Adafruit's YouTube. So uh, a bunch of different places where you can watch this and participate. Um, okay, so first of all, I want to talk about uh, what's going on with these controllers, because these are really cool. Um, this is a typical Guitar Hero controller. Uh, these are rhythm games, Guitar Hero and then Rock Band were a couple of the really popular ones. Uh, and hey, Oscar Torres, jumping over into the YouTube chat, welcome. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is turning this wireless Wii-based Guitar Hero controller into a wired USB Guitar Hero controller that you can use on your computer. Uh, I'm using it for Clone Hero which uh, is sort of the modern equivalent. It's what people are playing on computers uh, these days. Um, kind of took the place of Guitar Hero when that stopped being updated, I think, on PC. Uh, I'm, I'm mostly new to this world. I played these things a long time ago. I'm terrible, so this is not the live stream for uh, watching a Guitar Hero Master or Clone Hero Master. Um, so the way these typically work is there are buttons. There's uh, five or six fret buttons usually on these. They're colored, and uh, it's a rhythm game where you'll see notes flying down a highway, as it's called, this kind of uh, guitar neck looking highway. You'll see the notes moving along, and you have to uh, press and or press and strum with this little strum bar uh, in time with the notes. And those can be individual notes, this can be chords, uh, some more advanced techniques are things like hammer-ons and tapping. Uh, I'm going to set this up in the kind of most basic way uh, I know how, which is to just uh, accommodate the tapping right now. I just didn't wire up the, the strum bar. It's possible, but I, I didn't yet. Um, now, the way this one worked originally is you plugged in a Wiimote right there, and then it used uh, the Bluetooth of the Wiimote to communicate with that particular console. Some of these are wireless Bluetooth. Some of these are wired for PlayStation and, uh, and USB in some cases for, I think, for Xbox. A um, couple of other quick things. First of all, these have a neat feature of being able to unlock the neck and pull it out. And this is what inspired me initially to mess around with this, is that you'll see at the base of the neck on this particular model, there's just a set of PCB contact pads. And these are for a common... Uh, power and then uh, five ground switches that, that uh, send these uh, lines, these circuits uh, high, I believe it is, when they're pressed. Um, and so what we're going to do, I originally was like, hmm, I wonder if I should just solder some contacts to these, but then I decided to open up the controller and you'll see in there there's a little set of pogo pins, little spring, spring pins that make contacts with those. Uh, and I wanted to look at what was going on in there. So I'll show you some photos rather than open one right here. This is uh, what I was up to on my workbench yesterday. So let's um, pop over to, how about this view? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so uh, try not to knock over this other guitar. So what we have here is uh, the Guitar Hero controller. My son had decorated with stickers 
many years ago. I don't know how... When did this game come out? It feels like it was more than 10 years ago, probably. Um, so, uh, this is... Let's see if I can get slideshow working. So there's what we just saw there. There's the little contacts up close. That's the pogo pins on the inside of the neck. A uh, bunch of screws later, including one under that warranty void and a couple on the front side after you pull off the uh, faceplate or the pick guard. Uh, and so this is the, uh, the main controller board you see here in the middle. And you can see this little ribbon cable going from uh, the guitar neck uh, fret button pogo pins onto that board. And then it runs over to a little microcontroller, uh, which is then uh, formatting that data to send it to the Wii um, over, I think it's I squared C. Uh, and then the Wii moat uh, sends it via Bluetooth to the game. And so there's just a bunch of sub assemblies here. There's a, a, a let's grab the controller. So there's the button board, there's a XY axis joystick here, uh, there's a couple of more buttons here, and there's a uh, potentiometer for this uh, whammy bar here, uh, and then there's a couple of switches. They almost look like keyboard uh, switches, like Cherry MX style switches, a little slightly different, uh, that are what are activated by the strum bar. And so what I did was I simply, uh, I didn't want to deal with the microcontroller on there uh, and, and trying to uh, reverse engineer anything there. That's beyond my skill set. Um, but what I did do is just solder some uh, wires with alligator clips on them so it would be easy to hook up one of our little Circuit Playground Express boards to it. This is a sort of proof of concept, temporary. I would internalize this solder point to point and make it all small and, and uh, internal if it were uh, a more permanent thing. Um, and uh, uh, spoiler alert, my son was playing with this and uh, he's much, much better at, at rhythm games and he plays real guitar and he's really enjoying it. And I have some more spares of these, so I may make a nice one that does like all, all everything, including maybe an accelerometer for tilt sensing. Uh, Cause some of these games have like a power, uh, you can, you can use a power up by shaking the guitar or tilting it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, anyway, so I, I decided to connect up some uh, wires directly to the points that are coming from those pogo pins uh, from the neck uh, fret buttons there. And then just run it to these um, alligator clips and out of one of the holes. So there's actually a bunch of these holes in the front of the guitar uh, plastic face because it expects you to snap in that white plastic uh, pick guard there. Um, that's what those snap into. So by leaving that off, I just have a nice uh, exit point for all of those alligator clips to work with. Uh, and so that's what it looks like there. Uh, and then to show you a quick um, schematic of this, let's uh, bring that up and hide miniature me. There we go. Uh, so this is just inside of fritzing. I diagrammed out what uh, the controls are. So you can see we have a common uh, voltage line there. So we see that three, oh gosh, mirror pointing. We have this 3.3 uh, volt. I, I happen to run a black wire because I thought I was going to use ground at first, but that black li line is actually running voltage. Uh, and then we close uh, all of those contacts with individual buttons to individual pins. So I'm not multiplexing or anything like that. We're just running to individual inputs on uh, the Circuit Playground Express. And we're going to use uh, inside of make code the uh, essentially the touch a digital button uh, block. So when, when a button is pressed or a button is down and then up block. So it's dead, dead easy. Um, I'll talk maybe on another show about pull up versus pull down resistors, but essentially I think this is um, the, the Circuit Playground Express input buttons are wired for pull down. Uh, and so that works perfectly in this case using uh, the voltage instead of the ground as the common. Um, okay, so let's take a look um, Let's see, let's talk about what are we actually gonna do here? So uh, here you can see, here's make code. And the way this is gonna work is that I'm gonna um, fix my camera. Um, I'm going to take the uh, Circuit Playground Express, these guys here, and I'm gonna use it 
not as a game controller, but actually as a keyboard. Uh, I believe we could do this with the game controller as well, but the keyboard was very easy to set up. Uh, I was able to test with my regular keyboard and you can kind of just alternate between the regular mechanical keyboard sitting on my desk here or um, using USB keyboard output from this. So uh, the Circuit Playground Express and a lot of modern microcontrollers have the ability to look like they're a mouse or a keyboard or a gamepad all over the human interface device, HID, of USB. In other words, the computer has no idea this thing isn't just a keyboard that's plugged in. Uh, so what I'll do is have uh, the, what is it, ASJKL buttons, which are the default on uh, the Clone Hero game and a lot of, a lot of rhythm games, um, as the five fret buttons. And this is going to send identically, it's going to send a um, A press down command as long as I hold that first button, that green button, and then it will send an a released command. Uh, those are two separate commands inside of um, the USB keyboard description, the way that works. So what we want, the first thing we want here is to get this thing acting like it is a keyboard. Uh, then what we'll also do just for um, testing and for fun and for fanciness and maybe for future modifications is light up some of these colored NeoPixels, these RGB NeoPixels that run around the edges of this thing uh, to correspond with the color of the button that you're pressing. Uh, so this is fairly standard red, uh, sorry, green, red, yellow, blue, orange. Um, <clears throat> I did the wiring pretty much like that, except I didn't have any orange alligator cables. Um, so, so I've got a white cable there instead. And let's see, you can't see that right now. I will, let me, just, let me grab this camera and point it there, you can see. So there is my alligator clips. And uh, we'll look at how those are arranged again on that schematic in a second. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the first thing that we do inside of Make Code to get this to work is head down to Extensions and add the keyboard extension. It is not here because I already added it, but it looks just like this gamepad and mouse, except it's a keyboard, uh, a little drawing of a keyboard. Uh, and these all do uh, a similar set of, set of functions, which is add a set of blocks that we can see here under this uh, section called keyboard. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink of delicious iced tea. And by adding that extension, this category of blocks gives us, uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can, you can see uh, those a little bigger. Those give us a keyboard uh, typing a string. So if you want to type in a whole series of, of buttons, let's say um, you had a login that you wanted to type in all at once, you hit a button, it'll type in all of the characters in there. You could potentially also use this for um, sort of macro hacks uh, for any game, but in, in this case, if you had maybe one of the buttons down on the body uh, and you wanted it to send uh, the outer, like the first, third, and fifth uh, buttons all at once for you, uh, you could use that. So it would, it would send that sequence very quickly of, of keys. Um, there might be better ways to do it. I think that one has a little tiny delay between them and you might be able to get the delay shorter. Uh, just by using this next one, which is keyboard key press. So um, this one allows you to say what key you're trying to type. So I'll put it in an A. Uh, and if we use that right now, let's say we just put that in our on start block. When you start up the microcontroller, it's just going to type an A one time. If you put this in the forever loop, it'll just keep pressing it over and over again. Um, <clears throat> the press is actually a press and release. It's kind of a the name is a little um, misleading there. So it's, you can maybe kind of call it type type A or uh, type type the type the key in or press and release. Uh, that's what it does. It presses it down and it releases it. Uh, the down is down and hold. And that'll give you a repeat in some things. Like if you're just typing in, in a word processor or a text editor, uh, <clears throat> that uh, will, as long as that's held, it'll, you know, do the key repeat of your, uh, operating system or of your software. And then an up is the upstroke. That's what releases it. Um, so let me trash that one. Now we'll look at some of the other options in here. 
Uh, there are keyboard modifiers. And uh, what a keyboard modifier is, uh, is anything that needs uh, another key added to it, such as a shift or a control or a command or the Windows key, uh, sometimes called the, the meta key, uh, the Apple uh, command key. So any of those modifiers uh, can be added to what you're doing. So if you needed to, for some reason, have shift A mean something different than A, uh, you can bring in, go grab it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me say a couple of these and then we could have a shift being pressed down followed by the A being pressed down and then at some point the release on that or we could do a, a press on both of them and release uh, in one go. So that, that's how you get things like um, capital letters as well as any of the command keys. Um, the uh, function keys are just broken out as a separate group. Uh, I can't remember if there's anything. Yeah, so, so there's also some of these other uh, interesting keys, not just function, but you've got print screen, scroll lock, home, page up, page down, delete, and so on. So there's a bunch of keys there that are useful. And there are the media keys. I've shown this before. This is things like volume up, down, pause, play. And then clear all, I've actually never used this. I assume that fixes uh, if you have a whole bunch of keys pressed down and you're not even sure which ones and you want them all lifted up. That's my guess. Uh, if anyone knows, if anyone's used that, let's see, does it have a tooltip associated with it? Uh, let me put it inside of a, a loop so that it'll tell us what's happening. Let's, let's bring in a forever loop. What's your tooltip thing? Tell me. Send up commands for any remaining down keys. That's great. Oh, yeah. So that's almost like um, uh, someone had mentioned, I think, Feta2 and FX Music over in the chat. Hey, FX Music. Nice to see you. Uh, mentioned MIDI and sending uh, CCs and things like that. Yeah, of course, you could use this controller to send MIDI. And, um, of course, the, the famous MIDI panic that just says, let's turn off all possible notes or send a note off command for all possible notes. Uh, I guess that's what this clear is for in, in um, keyboard, text keyboard terms. Uh, okay, so next let's look at uh, what I'm doing on uh, the key presses. So actually, we don't even need, let me collapse this, we don't even need to show any of that stuff right now. Uh, here's how I'm uh, using my inputs for the key switches. So remember, I've got uh, these plugged in here, so green, that's the first one. Green is plugged into pin A1 on the Circuit Playground Express on one side, and it's plugged into the common uh, high voltage on the other. And so that means using uh, the default uh, pull-down resistor, internal pull-down resistor. We don't need any ec extra parts, so there's a pull-down resistor um, built into... Uh, the microcontroller, uh, the ATSAM D21 there, M0 chip that's on there, uh, that uh, every input pin that we have uh, can use a, a resistor that's internal. It's got tiny little resistors in there. Um, so that means that we can go and grab this uh, button click. If I can find my cursor, where'd you go? Oh, wrong screen. There we go. Uh, so this on button click, that'll work uh, with the default built-in uh, A and B button right there. Um, if I switch this drop-down to pin A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I can use uh, these alligator clip pins here as a um, uh, an input. And that will, again, use the notion of click, which is press and release or just a down or just an up. Um, so to test the theory of this, actually, I like using this because it's built, built in uh, to the simulator. So I can show how this works. Um, I'm gonna say pin A1 when it's down, so it's being pressed. How about we will light up uh, some NeoPixels. Let's see, where are my onboard NeoPixels? these ones here. So how about we'll just set all the pixels to red. And I'm going to temporarily 
Uh, actually, you know what? Let's use A, uh, button A, just because I already have that pin in use. Uh, or in fact, let's, let's, how about grab pin seven? I know I'm not using that. So that's this one down here. Uh, and the simulator lets you press these. So you can see right now, it's setting them all to red. When I release, it doesn't turn them off, however, and that's because the only thing it's looking for is the pin down, uh, the, the, the pin being pressed, or the button that's connected to that pin being pressed. So I'll make a second one. I can just duplicate this, and this will be the same pin, A7, uh, but now what happens when it's on up? So I've released it. We'll set all the pixels to black, which is off. Uh, so now, you can see, as long as I'm holding that, it's setting the colors on the NeoPixels. Excuse me. So now, if I want to do the keyboard press, let's say this uh, types in a letter Q for us. I'm going to head over the Neo, uh, not the NeoPixel, the keyboard, right below. Keyboard, key, press a Q down, that's not a Q, that is. And I'll duplicate that, put it into my up block, and I'll say the Q comes back up. So now when I press this, uh, it's gonna try to type a letter Q. Now the simulator can't actually do that, but uh, I'll show you um, the real uh, Circuit Playground Express doing this in a second. Um, and I can trash these now. So that's just as an example. But what I've done is I've set up uh, a whole series of these. So here is the first one, pin A1 when it goes down, and that's when it goes up. Let me move these off my face for a second. And uh, we can see, so A1 is gonna be connected to this first fret, the green one. Uh, and that's going to type in an A, and then when it's released, it's going to type, uh, uh, it's going to release the A. So it presses A and releases A. Uh, if we look over at uh, this browser keyboard um, tester, I thought this was a nice way to show how this works, I can now press the A button on my uh, keyboard or on the guitar. Let's... Um, let me move this so you can see my guitar while I'm doing it. Uh, let's see, where are you? Display capture, yeah, that's it. Let's move this off to the side for a second. Uh, so now watching the keyboard here, oh, I've gotta make a focus be live here. When I press A, it just presses an A and when I release, it releases. And you can see uh, the little highlight around the A lighting up to show me that it's being used, when it's being used, okay. And now I'll put this back because this is actually my same window capture uh, that I'm using for this tab here. Um, so that gets repeated for all sets. So I'm using five, five uh, buttons on there. And uh, so with all of these uh, expanded, I'll expand and format so we can look at them all. Uh, ignore that on start block for now, but you can see we've got uh, all these sets of uh, pin A2 down and up, three down and up, four down and up, five down and up, and wherever one was over here. Um, now, uh, I mentioned it would be nice to also not only type in the keys to use it as the controller, it's kind of, the, by and large, the most important part, uh, but I thought it would be also fun to use the colored NeoPixels that are built onto uh, the Circuit Playground Express here. And what I wanted to do was light uh, two or three, uh, we've got 10 pixels and, and five buttons, so I guess we could do two, 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 two. Um, and what I wanted to do is light those up to the appropriate color that's being pressed on the uh, neck of the guitar. And I decided to reuse this um, method from last week, which I used on the seven segment display, which is uh, this ranges, let me move that out of the way a little bit. Uh, these ranges of NeoPixels, um, which are 
uh, a way to talk to a range of them without having to send, like, tell pixel one to be green and pixel two to be green. I don't have to set it up as separate block commands. So instead I've set uh, these variables uh, as uh, subsections of the strip. So if we look in light uh, NeoPixel, I build the onboard strip. So we um, create a variable called button one LEDs and it's set to the onboard strip range. And so that range uh, is right here, this, this block right here. Uh, and we tell it where it starts on which pixel, which is uh, pixel zero is this upper left corner one, and then how many pixels uh, to light up. So you can see with the first one, I'm lighting three, the others I'm lighting two, 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 and one. And that's partly because I didn't want one bridging the bottom there. Uh, so you can see this in action now, because uh, this, will, this will show up in the simulator. If I press uh, the one, in fact, let me go full screen with this. If I press pad one, we get green uh, pixels to indicate button one, two is red, three is yellow, uh, four is blue, and five is orange. It's just one of them. And let's uh, minimize that again. And so now if I go, uh, in fact, let's, let's look just at the guitar here. Guitar Hero, just here. Uh, you can see the, uh, let's see, I gotta be careful where the cursor focuses or I'll be typing in A, B, C, or A, B, A, L, S, J, K. Uh, so here you go, you can see, you know, that's not breaking anything. So green, red, yellow, blue, and orange. The orange looks kind of yellowy. Um, it's not a great, not the best orange. Orange is hard to do on LEDs, on RGB LEDs. You've got to tune it. It's not hard to do, but the, the defaults don't actually look as great as I want. Uh, so that's actually, uh, you can see it's, it's threaded. It allows button presses to happen during other button presses. I can press a whole bunch at once and it registers instantaneously. Um, and just to be careful, because you don't want a lot of lag uh, when, you're, when you're playing a fast um, uh, song in something like Clone Hero. Uh, I have the button presses happening first. So if you look at how each um, set of blocks is, it's going to send the HID keyboard press, then it's going to do the LED thing. Um, and I, like I, I've, I've said, I'm not a great uh, player. In fact, I'm fairly terrible. I'm very basic on easy. Um, I got my son to play this and he, we tuned the, the game lag uh, to get like the video and the audio lined up to where, where it seems uh, crisp. And he was playing some pretty fast, uh, medium and hard level stuff and didn't feel like there was lag uh, with the controller, which is great. Um, you, could, you could probably instrument this to measure it, but uh, I'm going to take his word on it. Um, I got to make the meatily, meatily noise. I do. Here, I'll send, you, I'll send you that. That's what that typed. Uh, okay, so why don't we now take a look at this uh, in action? Uh, first of all, let me, let me check the, the, the various chats. Um, where is... Oh, now I've done it. Let me see if the chat is... I don't know if I can see the chat happening here on the Twitch stream. Uh, someone tell me, is the Twitch stream working? Uh, because I don't see, I'm not seeing the Twitch stream on MS Make Code. Let me type that address in, MS Make Code. Please tell me it's been broadcasting. Is anyone watching it? Oh yeah, there it is. Hi, there I am. Okay. Um, good. I just am not seeing the, the stream chat or no one's in it. That happens too. Uh, okay, I'll pause that so I don't break anything. Uh, let's see, over on YouTube, any questions? Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Some mention of CircuitPython. Yeah, you could definitely use uh, CircuitPython to do this. Uh, and that's one of the cool things. The, um, uh, the way that we're doing this, this is on the Circuit Playground Express, but this would work with nearly every board I've ever used on MakeCode. So our, this is the Adafruit MakeCode, which is just for Circuit Playground Express. Then there's a um, maker.make code, which looks nearly identical, but it covers a whole wide range of boards, lots and lots of different boards. Uh, and then there's the micro bit make code. 
Uh, pretty much all of those boards uh, that, that are um, that are going to run make code. They, I think nearly all of the ones I've tried have USB HID, so they can do this. They they can read in some buttons being pressed and they can write out USB HID. Uh, so you could do it with a Gemma or a Trinket. They just don't have that many inputs. So uh, you'd want to base this on on how many inputs you want, how many buttons. Uh, in the in the end, this one would need. Let's count them up. I've got five fret buttons. Uh, Six and seven for the two directions of the strum bar. It's two separate buttons. So six, seven, uh, eight, nine for these navigation buttons, and then uh, an analog input for this joystick. Two of them because it's X, Y, and a th and a third analog input for this. So that fits. Uh, what did I say? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. You could run that on a itsy bitsy. Uh, I think you could run that on a feather. Um, we have seven inputs on here that could be either analog or digital. So you're not going to cover everything, but you might not necessarily want those two extra buttons on here. Uh, you also have the accelerometer, so that's nice for for doing things for boards like this that have a built-in accelerometer. You can do those like power up, uh, star move, whatever it's called. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at this in action, shall we? Uh, so what I've got is I was watching some insanely amazing um, YouTubers who stream or Twitch streamers to stream Clone Hero, uh, and I checked out how they how they set this up. So um, there's a very nice uh, pre-made alpha mat to to mask out just the parts that you want and reposition. So I've just got, uh, like my scores will be terrible here, but I've got just the little score counter and the, um, the highway uh, neck thingamajig. So uh, what I'll do is let's restart. And I'm gonna take this off of this improvised stand I built to hold it there. And since uh, I said I set this up so I don't need to use the strum bar, so it's literally just going to be uh, typing, tapping these, these buttons here, which is really all my brain can handle. Uh, and then you'll see even uh, the navigation is meant to be done right on the guitar, so you don't have to go touch on your computer. Uh, I don't have some of those buttons mapped, so I can only do things like uh, I can restart with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try to turn up the volume on this, and I hope you don't get a terrible echo, but it's gonna be more interesting if you can hear this insane uh, Troopers of the Stars song by Dragon Force. And I hope we don't get a copyright takedown too. How about that? Uh, so let's turn that up. Ooh, I'm not hearing it. Let's see. I just hear my own echo, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, you'll at least see it for a second. Oh, I missed that. That's kind of harder without being able to hear anything. <laughs> it's totally silent. All right, let me turn volume down. Uh, I thought I had this working. Let's, uh, I won't take too long because uh, this won't be very exciting for you to watch, but I do want to see if I can add in an audio source. Let's try that. Let's go to advanced audio properties. All right, I don't know if this one is it. See if I can add in a audio source. All right, we'll see. I'm gonna try to route my audio to 
black hole, which is a rerouter. Pause that and I'll turn that audio capture down. Let me turn my system audio down so you don't hear the echo. Oh, good. So hopefully, let me know in the chat if you can now actually hear um, me again normal. And uh, sorry, I didn't have that uh, well sorted. I thought I did, but something, I think I had unplugged something and it got crazy. Uh, that's actually one of the biggest tricks with these things is setting up audio to play off of an app uh, and you still use your mic and hear stuff. Obviously, I should have headphones on, which is um, the best way to do that, but I don't. So uh, anyway, that's a, a, a bit. Yeah, I should have banged my head. How come I didn't? I need to bang. I need more head banging. Um, <laughs> someone said, Paul, Paul Curry says, John, you're fine. You've spent your hours learning more productive skills than rhythm game shredding. Oh, my gosh. My son and I were watching a YouTube or a Twitch streamer last night who played one of the harder songs in the game and uh, I think was at 100% speed. Some people play it at faster speeds, but he was playing it blindfolded. Like he just had a ski cap because he just had memorized it so well. And it's like <laughs> amazing. I'm amazed. Uh, my head doesn't work that way. I, I really am blown away by people who are awesome at these games. Um, so let's see. That's about it. Um, if, if we uh, take a look here, the um, let me go back to that there. If you take a look here, I'll uh, minimize the... You can see that's all the code it takes. And a big chunk of that is um, completely bonus stuff of having the LEDs light up. So imagine basically all of these blocks here gone. We don't need them and half of every one of these gone. So it's a very simple thing uh, to use just these discrete events of the, the pin A one through uh, what five uh, up and down blocks and then insert into them the keyboard block. And uh, like I said, you could do things like have some extra inputs doing uh, kind of turbo auto fire stuff. If you, I guess, if you lined it up with the um, the tempo of the song and just initiated it, you could have you know, a button that just does strumming as as fast as the I don't know thirty second notes or sixty fourth notes or whatever they are thrown at you. Um, so there's there's stuff you could do there for cheating, uh, but I didn't you know I, I I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to show what the um, uh, the real basics of giving new life to one of these keyboard or these um, guitar controllers that otherwise is kind of a pain in the neck to use. I think there are, um, there's, there's probably code out there to massage and, and uh, deal with the Bluetooth data coming off of a Wii uh, Mote controller. If you have it, you can plug it into there and use that. 
but there are um, a, a pretty wide variety of these made for different consoles. And, uh, you know, this is the brute force way to go and say, if there's a contact inside the PCB for a button or for a, a analog uh, input like a potentiometer for these joysticks, uh, there's no reason you can't just run a direct line from those into your microcontroller uh, and then do anything you want with them. So, uh, like I said, I'll probably end up building a, a, a nice little uh, one with something like a feather board. Uh, this one actually is the Feather Sense NRF 52840. So this one's got accelerometer and other sensors built on, so you could definitely do like the neck tilt stuff. Uh, and it's also got Bluetooth, so the potential is there to set it up as a, as a straight up Bluetooth controller that you can edit all the parameters of, uh, as well as use it right over USB if you want to be plugged in. Uh, I'm assuming that the latency of Bluetooth is low enough in these cases um, that people are, are happy to use Bluetooth. It was, it was kind of how this original worked. Um, and uh, I'm sure the Wii latency, the Wii mote latency is low on Bluetooth, but um, not not crazy, impossible, physics-defying low. So. Uh, all right, so I think that is it. Let me know um, if you have any uh, questions in the chat. I'll pop on over uh, to check out what's happening. And uh, I'll, I'll be around here a little, little bit. Uh, can you have a headbang sensor? You could. You could, you could definitely add, add some extra sensors, which would be kind of fun, you know, if you, uh, if you want to do sensors that aren't actually on the guitar but are still, you know, if you just want to tip your head to, to hit the, uh, the power up or whatever instead of moving the guitar, you, you can. Um, and there are actually quite a few different controllers in this uh, series that are usually really inexpensive. It's one of the things I like about them. We, we had a bunch of them from when we got the game uh, and you can find them at thrift stores pretty frequently, just on eBay. They're not that much uh, from what I can tell. You probably have some in your garage. And there are also, uh, there's a keyboard uh, controller, a small keyboard that's essentially a MIDI, MIDI keyboard controller. Uh, there's, uh, I have at least three DJ controller uh, turntable setups with the mixer between them. Uh, and those have a, a nice uh, rotary encoder of some kind that I've, I've been interested in playing around with. And uh, drums, I'm sure there's some other stuff. Uh, the one other note about this controller, I think it's on, yeah, it's on both of these that I have, and this might have changed over time. There's actually an RJ11 port here, which is a telephone uh, plug. I think it's a four conductor, yeah. Four conductor plug. So uh, that would be another way. It's not really used. I think there was going to be a, a guitar pedal accessory that never came out. Um, so that would be another neat way, instead of like running my alligator clips through here, if you wanted to just have a, a, a dongle you plugged to the external um, of, of exterior of the guitar, um, that's kind of an interesting option. Just use some telephone cables, some four conductor uh, cable there to, to hook something in. Uh, particularly if you're doing maybe dot star LEDs or NeoPixels or um, some I squared C or SPI communication with something on the inside. Very interesting. Always happy to see a phone connector. All right. Well, that is it. That's all I've got for uh, the show today. Thank you uh, so much for stopping by to watch. Um, and uh, I will see you next Tuesday with the next Make Code Live. Uh, please send me some suggestions in the chat uh, in the live stream uh, or the live broadcast um, channel of the Adafruit Discord, adafruit.it slash discord. I, I check that place out as well as the forum.makecode.com, another great place to go and hang out and answer and ask questions. Uh, so let me know if there's something in particular you want to see. Uh, and then I will be running a Adafruit show and tell on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be an hour-long show and tell. Uh, and you can come and join and show some projects you're working on. And then I'll be doing my uh, John Parks Workshop live stream on Thursday. So please come see some of those things and uh, check out the other great Make Code shows happening here on the MS Make Code 
Twitch. There's lots of good broadcasts about Arcade and Minecraft and the different microcontroller-based make code. A lot of incredible content uh, from the team, from the developers right there at Microsoft working on make code. So it's, it's uh, fantastic stuff. Go check it out. All right, thank you everyone so much. And uh, I will, uh, maybe I'll try to play it, play it out. How about that? Oh gosh, here we go. My defense, I think I've created new lag with some of this setup because that's actually terrible even for my normal terribleness. <laughs> Thanks everyone. I'm having fun anyway. See you next time.